coming right there. Oh, hey guys, we just wrapped up Operation Valkyrie. We just had our big graduation supper. Check this stuff up. The guys are starting to pack up. It got a little bit soggy. Literally, that's the poor guy's shoe. Funny stuff, funny stuff indeed. It's a great time. Operation Valkyrie, what is it? I appreciate you asking. Basically, these guys, it's four days, uh, three nights, and a kayaking, survival, precision rifle, unconventional warfare excursion-ish. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't really do it, doesn't really do it. You gotta kind of describe it a little better than that. Uh, well, first foremost, they, they show up here and they show up at the safe house. This safe house, I know it kind of looks like a shed to you guys, but basically cots, everything, full kitchen, nice, but this is up on my property. We've got our range in the backyard, everything, nice, nice stuff. They show up, they get that initial in-briefing. They get given their 27-page area study uh, about the whole environment here. Basically, the scenario is that they are going to be conducting operations on the continent of Atlantica. Atlantica is made up of three countries. You basically have the Republic of Volunteer Land, who is being supported by America. And then you've got the People's Republic of Pelicana uh, to the west, and they are being supported by Russia and other people of the former Soviet Union. And then down south, you've got uh, the Republic of Magnolia. Okay, blah, 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 blah. But no, but it, it builds a scenario for them. Anyways, there's a disputed zone between uh, the two countries. And that disputed zone is actually being controlled by a couple different terrorist factions, terrorists to us, freedom fighters to somebody else. Now, the cool part is these two terrorist groups, they don't get along at all. The leaders don't get along. But before the Americans can lead their guerrilla troops from the People's Republic of, I'm sorry, from the Republic of Volunteer Land, the A-teams there, before they can take back the disputed zone, if these two terrorist leaders get together and consolidate their troops, they'll be able to fight back. So we got to keep this meeting from happening, keep them from getting together. Hence the whole scenario, it slowly begins to grow. So these guys, they come in and they're from all over the US, all walks of life. We have got uh, literally everybody here. We have got the CEO from Nutrient Survival who actually sponsored this whole thing. They all come in, fly in, they brought their guns, some guys bring, M4, some guys bring precision rifles, some guys bring lots of kit, other guys bring just the bare minimum, doesn't matter. They get here, we do a, their mentors do a complete gear shakeout. Uh, did they bring the right stuff? Did they forget something? If they forgot stuff, no big deal, we deal with it, right? Later that night, they get a whole class from their mentors on camouflage and ghillie suits. Now, I mentioned mentors, these, nine clients, they all get divided up into three three-man sniper teams, right? Each sniper team has a mentor. Now, mentors are from my old unit. They are literally combat decorated Green Beret snipers that are now retired, but they're guys from that I have actually served with that I know for a fact have dropped the hammer and smoked guys overseas. These guys know their job, they're very, very good at it, and they're animated. I pick good instructors that are good at interacting like this. So they do that, that wraps up basically the first night. The next morning, now these guys have just slept on cots, right, why? Because I wanted them to rough it. I have uh, staged out of five-star hotels, I have staged out of the embassy, but I've also slept in parking garages, I've slept in the woods, I've had to rough it, rough it before. I want to give them that taste of the suck. So that's kind of what we do with them. Uh, the next morning we started off, we do uh, basically a PowerPoint presentation on sniper operations, duties of each guy. You've got your shooter, then you've got your spotter, then you've got your security guy, but understanding that those all rotate. We get into uh, how to select hide sites, how to select that final firing position, priorities of work, things like that. So much going on from there. We take them out to the range and they get a chance to zero those guns. While we have them out there, we also talk about shooting on that radio countdown, 
right? Because if you've got two bad guys, you shoot one, what is the other guy gonna do? Is he gonna just stand there? Nada, this is real life. You, you shoot one guy, that other guy's gone. So to drop two targets, one from each terrorist cell, those two bullets have got to arrive at the exact same time. To do that, we teach them how to shoot on the radio countdown. Again, great training, but uh, they see even just shooting paper on the, the range here, not that easy to do. From there, hey guys, put your kayaks on the trailer. We're going to the park. What do you mean we're going to the park? We're not scheduled to infill till tomorrow. The deal is, is it's February, it's cold, the water's cold, we've had snow, we've had sleet, we've had freezing rain, and the reality is, is I can't safely put these guys onto a river that's above flood stage if I don't know for a fact that they can kayak. So we, end, we load them all up, and we go down to our local town park that has a nice pond, kitty pond, it's only about four feet deep. I have these guys kayak around, show me that they can kayak, turn left, turn right, 180, blah, 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 blah. Then, here's the part that I mentioned that it's, uh, it, it was a blistering 31 degrees outside. We then had them do capsize drills. That's right, get out of your kayak, get back into it. And uh, I, I think with wind chill, it was like 22 degrees, it was awesome. Perfect timing, without a doubt. So anyways, a couple of them turned blue, some of them different shades of red. It's, uh, I felt fine, and um, I, it doesn't matter. It's uh, For me to be fair and keep everybody safe, it's something I have to do. I'm not about hurting people's feelings. I'm about doing the right thing. So we get them back here, we let them thaw out a little bit. Some of them will swear to God they never thawed out completely. We get back here and my sniper mentors take them out and we immediately start doing patrolling with small units. So they start doing uh, uh, different movement techniques. From there, we actually wrapped it up that day with break contact drills, live fire break contact drills. We broke them for dinner, and then after that, we actually uh, brought them back out to the range and I introduced them to night sniper operations, all right? Uh, specifically using the night vision devices the clip-on thermals, the clip-on Gen 3s that you can put on the sniper rifles, but also dedicated night scopes that you could just leave on the guns. Again, both thermals and i squares, Gen 3s, using the IR illuminators, stuff like that. That took them late into that second night. Up the next morning, these guys start packing up their stuff. We bring them in for our CONOP, which is basically the standard operating uh, up order that all of our military guys are used to using. However, we use the unclassified version that was still basically being used in, uh, in Iraq, Syria, uh, places like that, still currently being used, same format being used by our SOCOM forces right now. All the different slides, satellite imagery, everything. We gave them a very detailed mission briefing about what their mission was step by step. Everything from concept of the operation to uh, each step, uh, step by step, and then what each cell was responsible for. Once you know that, once you know what your part of the mission is, keep prepping for that mission, but also you've got to start doing rehearsals for that. That took them pretty well all the way till infill. How do you do infill? Well, here's the deal again, because it's not just sniper ops. We wanted to give these guys a taste of unconventional warfare. Part of that, just like I did during Robin Sage when I earned my Green Beret uh, with uh, uh, Yusasak there at Fort Bragg, they've been doing Robin Sage since Vietnam era when Green Berets first got their Green Berets, literally. Same thing, unconventional warfare, but one of the things I thought was cool was to infiltrate us. They actually put me, my class, I went in in a grain feeder being hauled behind a farm, uh, farm tractor. Not quite that bad here, but what we did is literally, we gotta send one group to recon first. We put them in a, a regular SUV, in, infilled them in, that was SO1. Now, the deal was, scenario was the international border, they've got a couple dirty guards just like every international border does. They had the money to bribe this guy, but they need to make sure they found the right, the right guard. Now, how do you do that? Well, you say a certain word in a sentence, your bona fides, 
and then he replies with a certain word in his sentence. You make it flow. I'm not going to say what the words were, but basically, hey, it's the right guy. Pay him off a little bit, stacks of counterfeit money. And from there, and the, the checkpoint was beautiful. My uh, backside support guys, they had uh, cop cars with the magnetic border patrol signs, and we had uh, Republic of Volunteerland flags flying. They did a great job, they really do. My backside support guys did a great, great job. My role players did a great, great job. So they get through that thing, and they from there, they go down, they've got to recon a place where we can get all of our kayaks into the river. Now, why are we using kayaks? Well, because the mission is to go assassinate these two terrorist cell leaders. Now, the meeting they're gonna hold, they've got guards everywhere. There's no way to drive in there. There's no way to bring in a helicopter. They'll hear the helicopter. But between the two possible meeting locations, there's a river that runs through between them. Perfect way to sneak in, sneak in via kayak. That's the scenario. That means all these guys, you see them out here now packing up their stuff. All their stuff is wet because they've just been out kayaking four days, literally. So SO1's mission to start off with, find a place where we could put basically 14 kayaks into the water. Now, did I let them use a local boat ramp? Not a chance. He, there, he's, he's giving me that look like not even close. So you basically have got a river bank that's uh, below flood stage. We have some flooding, but it's a vertical wall of mud. Hilarious. They find the best spot they can, call back, and they let the second vehicle that's bringing the other two teams in with all 14 kayaks. How do you smuggle 14 kayaks across an international border? Can't put them in a grain car. We used a cattle trailer that basically hauls um, Black Angus cattle around, and uh, they're all in the back. Same thing, they come up, they've got to go through the same checkpoint, same thing again, find a correct guard, bona fides, they get down there. When we get to the river, we back the trailer in, now we've got to unload all these kayaks. Kind of uneventful though, if you've ever had to drag an empty kayak, not that bad. Now load one with all of your combat gear and everything, food, water, and you start looking at quite a bit of weight. These guys launch forward, and so we get that first team in the water, SO2. Their job is to go forward and recon a place, because we can't do, we'll, we'll never make it there before sundown. So we have to find a place where we can rest overnight. They had to find us a RON site, R-O-N, rest overnight. Now, the scenario is that they literally must have everybody off the water before the sun goes down because in the disputed zone, there's a curfew. And the Soviets, basically anybody out after sundown, shoot on sight. Their version of the Predator drone with their version of basically a Hellfire missile. Got to be off the water before sundown. So SO2 goes ahead. They locate a couple of caves that actually connect together a couple hundred meters back inside the mountain. And we call the rest of the teams forward. They get all the kayaks there. The problem though is it's 40 feet up the side of this thing to get to the caves. How are you going to do that? Harsh language? There was a little bit of harsh language being used, but They'd already done the rehearsal. So these guys had ropes, they had pulleys, they had pusiks, they had a lot of motivation. They also had a couple guys that had fallen in and were wet and were really wanting to generate some body heat. We got all of our uh, kayaks up out of the water. Now you can't just take a break for the night. You gotta send out security patrols. I mean, they're looking for trip wires, mines, everything. And from there, uh, we settle in, we start doing priorities of work. You got to. You can't just fiddle around. Guard duty, um, weapons maintenance, and you've got to get into cleaning the rest of your gear, personal hygiene, chow, and then, then you establish your rest plan. Security, though, all night long. Now, while they were doing their priorities of work, you know, you got guys eating chow and everything, I started grabbing them one at a time. The reason why I did that was in my kayak, I brought a AR, broke down with a simunitions bolt in it. Sorry, it was a UTM bolt. And I had 11 magazines of uh, UTM ammo. I had a helmet with nods and the rifle had an IR illuminator, IR uh, 
IR laser. What I had also done was I had pre-positioned in the next cave over, I'd set it up like a Hogan's Alley. Why? Because a lot of people never get the opportunity. You know, you can go do a shootout, you can go do a paint gun war at the mall. How many people get to actually clear a cave? How many people get to do, clear a cave under nods? Zero, literally zero. So I grab these guys one at a time, uh, set them up with their helmet, set them up with their gun, make sure they could control it. And then I showed them my little nifty PVS 14 that's got a iPhone mount on the back of it. I followed each one and recorded it for them so they could go through and see exactly how terrible they did. The cool part about it though, the funny part with caves is, the problem with caves is we are human beings and human beings are used to perfectly flat floors, perfectly flat walls and perfectly flat ceilings. You get into the caves and what you end up seeing is, now the floors fairly level because topsoil washes in and everything, but the walls are very jagged, but the ceiling is also very jagged. The ceiling comes down, goes up, goes up really high, 30, 40, 50 feet, and then it comes back down again to like two and a half feet. So now you're, these guys are having to literally squat down, crawl underneath and everything. But the other thing was they forget to look up. And one of those targets that they had to shoot was actually above them looking down at them. So, oh, everybody missed that one. A lot of them missed a couple other targets. That's all right, part of it. Um, the problem with nods and the reason why they're missing the one outside the cave was, again, uh, human beings, we are used to just moving our eyes left to right, left to right. We don't turn our head. Well, when you start using nods, uh, the assaulters eventually get used to it. Whenever you turn, you turn your whole head. These guys weren't used to that, so they're, they weren't turning those nods and they end up walking right by paper target. Not their fault, they're just not used to wearing nods that much. No big deal. Great night from there. Priorities of work. A few guys snored, uh, I, I'll, I'll admit that. Cool part, the cave's got those acoustics, so let us know. The two teams near the two entrances, they froze their asses off. The one cell that was in the back part of the cave stays 61 degrees year round. They, they were down the t-shirts, great time. Enter the next morning with that sun coming up. I start off the day with a couple servings of my homestyle scramble from Nutrient Survival. Got my vitamin coffee. Uh, good stuff indeed. I didn't even have room for the vitamin eggs. I mean, this stuff fills you up, it really does. And again, I appreciate them sponsoring us. From there, we load everything up and we gotta head down and put the kayaks back in the water. From there, we launch SO3. They've gotta go down to do the link up with our gorilla commander. So we launch them down there, they find the guy, there's a guy fishing but there might be other guys fishing, so same thing. They've got to say a certain bona fides with this guy. He answers back with such and such word. Turns out it was the correct guy. And they call on the radio. We bring the rest of the guys down. We're off kind of, it's a lot easier putting kayaks into the water than getting them back out of the water. Yeah, he's nodding his head. He is, he's nodding his head. The cool part about this particular link up is there's a beautiful waterfall there. So they meet the guy. And uh, he's like, hey, you're not here to see me. You're here to see Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike's up in the cave. Up in the cave, you mean up the waterfall. Yeah. So we end up having to go up a waterfall into a cave that's about waist high. Once you get in, it opens up to six feet. They go in a couple hundred feet. Mike's up on the side. Now, Mr. Mike is the guerrilla commander leading these forces. Now, the cool part is he's actually got photos of what our terrorist cell leaders look like. Nobody's ever had a photo of them. And he knows the meeting place is to the north of the river, not to the south. This is important stuff. The hard part, though, is Mike, no speak of the Inglese. They had to work hard with this guy. Literally, um, facial signs, everything pointing at maps. Uh, Mike's English, to say the least, was very, very broken. But they got the information from the guerrilla commander. They come back out, they brief each other, and uh, we end up, and now we know we can fine tune our plan. So what we did is we fragged the plan. We did a fragmentation order. 
To do that, we had set up a nice, beautiful sand table. One of my cell leaders had built it. He had moss all laid out and everything, just like the satellite imagery. I, I see uh, Mike, my gorilla commander, just waved goodbye. He's going home to his family. All right, so from there, uh, finalized the plan. They jump back in the kayaks. Off we go. Sounds nice and easy. The problem, though, is it's over an hour to get down there, and the, war the water's continuing to speed up more and more and more. We get down to the target area. Now, remember, they are deep behind enemy lines now, so they get... They got to get all the kayaks in. They got to get everybody else. They got to prep their equipment. They find a good ORP or an objective rally point. They consolidate. They frag their mission again. This is what we're going to do. From there, they launch. And we finally, boots on the ground, start Operation Valkyrie. Now, what do, how do we do that? Well, that's shooting from... Uh, we got to shoot the guy, but you got to get there first. Now we're having to do land navigation. We're doing patrolling. We've got to go up the Silas Hill above a cliff, but without having to climb the cliff, cross through open areas, danger areas, through wooded areas, through fields. Got to infiltrate into this area. But once you get in there, that's roughly where the target area is. Now we've got to find a place that we can hide. So now they've got to fall back on that hide site class they had. They've got to do hide site selection. It was real easy back here behind friendly lines. Not so easy when they get out there. Find the target. Oh my God, we can't get eyes on. We can't get eyes on. We've got to do something. So they finally find positions, end up moving around. They burn hours. This was supposed to only take minutes. Find the hide site, get eyes on find that final firing position. Where can they actually shoot from? From there, okay, we can see the targets, but do we have a loophole that we can actually run bullets through? Easier to see, but we gotta remember that ballistic arc of that bullet. Are we gonna nick any tree branches? Remember, you just nick one little twig, that bullet's gone, that bullet's gone. Now, we got all that going on. Let's add roving patrols. Out of the blue, there are ATVs riding around. There's dismounts driving around. They've got RPGs. They have got uh, machine guns, AKs, shotguns, man dresses, kafias, everything going on. Um, all this to make sure that these guys stay tactical. All right, now, so rover, last rover patrol goes by and all of a sudden, in comes our bad guys. They get the call over the radio that the ISR, our predator drone overhead, has seen Suburbans coming into the area to the west. Lo and behold, out on our target area, we have got targets set up. Now these are cardboard targets that actually have balloons for heads and the, uh, a shot through the head hits the balloon. Now here's the deal though, they were told that the CIA had a deep cover operative also attending the meeting. So they can't just shoot everybody. They can only shoot Wazir and Omari. Those are the only two, can't shoot anybody else. Only Wazir, only Omari. And by the way, Intel has it, these guys are wearing body armor, so it has to be a headshot. Last minute, our, again, backside support guys, they go out and they put full size, head size, photos on these targets. Our sniper observer teams, all three of them immediately come over the radio. Hey, we see him, we see him, we see him. We see um, we see, define um. Who is it, who do you see? Well, we see Wazir, this group over here. They see Omari, we see this, I see both. Okay, positively ID that our high value targets have arrived. All right, now you gotta wait to get approval from Starfleet Command. They go over the radio. Com checks, everything else. I have control, I have control. Stand by. Five, four, three, two. The sniper shoot on two. Bullets go out. Both our targets fall at the exact same time. This is the only year that we have had perfect shots. These guys did great, did awesome. But there's no time to pat themselves on the back because what happens if you're a guard and all of a sudden your principal that you're guarding head all of a sudden comes apart. He starts shooting in that direction, so you start shooting. You start having what's called a mad minute. Well, the role players are actually out there with a big oak tree shooting live AK ammo into the 
oak tree. Now, these guys don't know the ammo is being shot into the oak tree. It sounds like it's going over their heads. So their mentors start motivating them to haul ass even faster. We got to get back to the kayaks. These guys get back to the kayaks. Oh, we got to secure gear. Got to get the kayaks back in the water. From there, kayak down again, back across the international border, link up with our three blacked out vehicles, two Suburbans and a Tahoe that the CIA has provided. Get in there, co collect up all the gear, load up the kayaks, convoy all the way back to the Grand Safe House and conduct mission debriefing, which we also tossed in a nice steak dinner with spirits around the bonfire. That's why there's nobody here right now. They're all out there enjoying themselves. I'm in here trying to uh, keep you guys in the loop. We've had a great, great Operation Valkyrie. We're not doing it next year. Why are we recording it this year? Because we change the mission every four years. This is our fourth year. So I wanna give you guys that wanted to come but didn't have the opportunity to do it, an opportunity to experience the jackassery, to experience the magic that went on here. And uh, again, I wanna give a big thanks and shout out to all of our backside support guys. I wanna thank my wife because today is actually my 30th wedding anniversary. Yeah, she's been reminding me for three months that I scheduled this on our 30th wedding anniversary. I wanna thank uh, uh, Nutrient Survival for sponsoring this great event here. But I wanna thank all of you guys for your interest. Literally, uh, this is a, not a cost-effective course at all, but it is one of my funnest things to run. I greatly enjoy doing this. And, uh, we don't even call it a class. We call it an excursion. It is sincerely a experience, not just for the clients, but also for me and my mentors. Uh, anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tour and uh, the madness. And uh, trust me, as cool as it looked in the video, it was nothing compared to what these poor rat bastards just went through right now. They had a good time. Operation Valkyrie. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.